Good afternoon, members. Welcome to this special meeting of Full Council. This meeting is being live streamed and recorded, and the recording will be made available on the Council website for public listening. Remote participants, please follow good practice guidance, which includes muting microphones, switching off your video when you're not addressing the meeting, writing speak in the Teams chat function when you want to contribute. If you're in the hall, you can do this on your phone or iPad. Please don't repeat contributions already made by other members. No material should be posted in the chat function if it's intended as part of the discussion. Usual standing orders apply, including that any votes will be undertaken by roll call. If you have to leave the meeting, please either leave the Teams meeting for that period of time or write leave in the Teams chat function, then join when you rejoin the meeting so we can keep track on whether the meeting is quorate. All members should speak clearly and directly into the microphone when making contributions and when referring to reports. Please provide reference to the relevant page and paragraph to allow everyone to follow. Please focus contributions on areas where clarification is required or to propose an alternative to a recommendation. Okay. That's probably more than the actual motion itself. But um, okay, on to the opening remarks. So I'd like to give congratulations to the Solway Skating Club uh, at the Britannia Cup 2023 last month. Uh, Solway Lightning were first to skate in the juvenile category, scoring an amazing 34.14 points. A spectacular performance, not only achieving a seasoned personal best, but a silver medal to take home to Dumfries. Solway Eclipse were first to skate in the very competitive mixed age category against nine other teams, with some having travelled as far as Australia and New Zealand. The Eclipse team completely stole the show with their fun and energetic programme, taking a seasoned personal best of 59.75, first place overall, and retained their British Championship mixed age title for a second year running. Solway's Stars were next in the junior ISU competition. Stars did not disappoint with a powerful and dramatic skate, achieving not only an all-time Stars personal best, free programme score of 92.80, and an overall score of 141.56, but a British junior personal best. This secured them sixth place overall in the Britannia International and first place in the British Championships, retaining their junior ISU British Championship title for the second consecutive year. And on the back of that competitive success, Solway Stars have now been selected to represent Great Britain at the Junior World Championships 2023 in Angers, France. Um, so a huge congratulations to our skaters and coaches for an incredible weekend at the Britannia Cup 2023. Thanks. Uh, Councillor Drybra. Yeah, th thanks very much, Jill. And, and, and just... You know, the, the, the couple of weeks after the, the Ice Hockey Championships for the under-18 girls and, and the, the curling that's actually been happening at the Ice Bowl and all of the excellent things that you just mentioned there, I just wanted to put on, on record my thanks to the staff and volunteers at the Ice Bowl in Dumfries because they have been made us proud in Dumfries and Galloway for the, the setup that they've got there. Thank you, Councillor Driver, and I'm sure everybody agrees with that, um, to note the contribution the staff make to enabling all of this to take place. Uh, thank you. So, moving on to the tabled agenda for today, uh, Vlad, can you provide the sedrant and any apologies, please? Thank you, Convener, um, and good afternoon, members. Um, we have no apologies today. Uh, we have 24 members present in the hall. Uh, we have 18 members present on the team's platform. Uh, and one member currently not present is uh, Councillor Justy. Thank you, Vlad. Thank you, Vlad. Um, I, confirm I confirm my agreement my to the participation of those members recorded as participating remotely. Uh, we have a question. question. Gail, Gail McGregor. It's just to record Councillor Justy's apologies. Thank you, Chair. Thanks for that, Councillor McGregor. I think we're just uh, getting a wee IT technical difficulty there that we're trying to address in the, in the room. And I assume that you can hear me? Yeah, can hear you, Councillor McGregor. I think we're just trying to make sure um, everybody's got their device microphone turned off in the room. OK, that's fine. OK, I think that's us uh, now. So. Another hand up. Yes, you'd like. Yeah, oh. 
Councillor Blake, please. Yeah, I was just to say that I had a uh, telephone call from Councillor Bell, who is always on the meeting. He's got technical difficulties with his mic. Uh, I saw, although I see in chat he's made thanks. He said thanks, so he may have gotten that sorted out now. Thanks, Councillor Blake. We'll try and keep an eye on that, but if there's, if there's an issue with his connection, then we can try and address that as we go through. Thank you. So um, with that, do any members have any declarations of interest they wish to make? No, okay. Okay, that takes us on to the mo notice of motion. We've been asked to consider the terms of the notice of motion proposed by myself and seconded by the Deputy Convener. I will propose the motion and invite Councillor Dorward to second, after which I'll invite questions and contributions from other members. So the notice of motion itself, which you should have received, uh, is to more accurately reflect the roles of the three groups in the administration of the Council, with the re responsibilities being shared proportionately across the SNP, Labour and the independent groups, along with a few changes being made to named representatives on outside bodies. We're trying to maintain as much as possible the existing arrangements for the chairs and vice chairs and service committees, which is important for business continuity and stability, and that's where our focus remains on the business of this council and how we can deliver for Dumfries and Galloway. We have to respect that each group will have its own priorities, but we have to work together on common ground. We have a slight change to the published motion in your papers. Copies will be made available to those present. So can copies be made available to the members in the room, please? I'm wondering as well, can we make copies available online for those not able to attend the meeting in person? Thank you. So with that, we therefore move uh, to appoint the role of convener designated as leader to Councillor Stephen Thompson, to appoint the role of deputy convener designated as civic head to Councillor Archie Drybra, to appoint the role of a second deputy convener designated as deputy leader to Councillor Richard Brodie, that all appropriate administrative changes be made to standing orders, the schemes of administration and delegation, the member officer protocol, including the media protocol, to reflect this change from the previously agreed co-leader model. The deputy convener civic head will be the first substitute if the convener is unable to chair full council and to make the following changes in the table, as you'll see there, to the representation in outside bodies. And then to change the chair of communities committee from councillor Ashley Drybra by appointing councillor Linda Dorward with immediate effect, I so move. I'm being advised of some technical difficulties for those receiving the information online, so just bear with us. So that's uh, me moving that. Um, Councillor Dorward. Thank you, convener. The single transferable vote or the STV process that underpins local democracy 
means that no single party or group in Dumfries and Galloway Council has the required majority to form an administration. It therefore falls to every party or group to look to work with others to make an administration work and to deliver the changes we have promised to those who elected us. In May 2022, 27 elected members opted to work together via an informal agreement process to achieve this, and today, 26 of us are still doing this successfully. As a council, I'm sure you will all agree our priorities should be focused on the people and region that we all represent. And the Scottish Labour Group is passionate about always putting our region and people at the front and centre of what we do. Neither this passion or our focus will be diminished by the changes in this proposed motion. We in the Labour Group are not political opportunists, rather we are pragmatists who understand that local democracy means taking the right decisions for local people at the right time. And we firmly believe you require to have people with the appropriate skill set to address the specific challenges we face at this moment. I second this motion. Thank you, Councillor Dorward. A question from uh, Councillor McGregor. Thank you, Chair. We'll see how the tech works now. Um, can you all hear me okay? Yes. It's not a question. Are we moving on from your motion? Yes, yeah, so it's been moved and seconded. So am I free to come in at this point? Yes, I believe so. Yeah. OK, thank you, convener or leader. I'm not entirely sure what you are at the moment. Um, I'd like to express my full surprise that only seven months into the term of this council that the Rainbow Coalition has thunderclouds surrounding it. Now, if we think back to May, and I've just listened to Councillor Dorward's wise words, I and my group were offering a truly stable, inclusive council, which would have involved all groups. It sought to respect that we are significantly the largest group, but that all groups mattered. In that spirit, it would have, in my opinion, seen almost 40% of senior positions go to parties in opposition, acknowledging that there are many quasi-judicial non-political committees within the council. Now, our vision would have seen all of you involved in that. It would have brought us all together for the good of our communities, whilst respecting the crucial and pivotal role of opposition. Instead, we've ended up with a Rainbow Coalition, which has shut out the largest party on this council, and it's doing a huge disservice to our electorate, a coalition that now seems to be in disarray. The leadership has made much of collaborative and inclusive working since last May, but it would appear that this is only on your terms. We, my colleagues and I, have in good faith engaged in leaders' panels, business bureaus and budget panels. I've sat around the table with you as group leaders on many occasions in recent months. So I was really surprised to read on Facebook last week that renegotiations for, for these positions have been ongoing since November. Renego renegotiations and discussions which have excluded me and again left out the largest party. This is neither collaboration or inclusion. It's a backroom deal to cling on to, gain, to power and to gain power positions with scant regard for our collective focus and what it should be. Tackling the cost of living crisis, improving our roads network, ensuring our vulnerable can access care at home and delivering the best education for our young people. This deck chair moving is an unnecessary distraction, but it indicates the need for change and true leadership. And the Conservative group on this council offers that much needed change and stability. I will leave it there, convener, but thank you. OK, thank you, Councillor McGregor. Um, are you proposing an amendment to what's in front of us today? Not at this stage. I think we'll see how the debate develops. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, any questions on the motion itself or any clarity sought? Councillor McCammon. Yeah, thanks, uh, convener. Just a very quick question to start with. Um, why is this a special meeting? Could it not have waited until the 28th when there was full council? What's the emergency? And why is it taking you eight, seven to eight months? 
Uh, I mean, the motion's there to be considered by council. It requires a council decision to to make to enact this, so that's why it's here today. No, I, I'm just trying to understand why it needs to be today. Why couldn't it wait until the 28th? What's the emergency? It's not an emergency meeting. It's just a special meeting. So okay, I've, sorry, I've... sorry, not emergency, special. Why is it a special meeting? Because my understanding is these these kind of um, shuffles take place in a full agenda at the end, an end of a an agenda usually in full council. So, what's the rush? Is all I'm asking. I think we have to accept that uh, as three groups in the administration, there's statutory rules and duties that go with that that we need to appoint. And if we, if, we, if we agree to make changes to that, which we've, that's what we're proposing today, uh, that's what we've done. And now is the time when we've done it. So that's why it's here today. I think it was the earliest diary, uh, diary date we could get, just for practical reasons. So it's um, just a practical thing as well. OK, I'm not going to get an answer, am I? Any other questions? Or should we just go to the, the vote, I suppose? Councillor McCammon. Yeah, sorry, um, another question. It's more of a comment as well, really, especially now we've just received this amend the, the amendment. Um, it's really sad that a, from the papers, I can see that it looks like Linda's been demoted twice um, from it. Also, how many men are now leading the council? It doesn't seem to be too gender balanced, in, in, in my opinion. Um, again, I'm going to stand by. I really don't know what the, 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 the hurry is here. Um, well, I know what the hurry is, but I would like somebody to clarify what it is before we go to, to the vote. Uh, well, I, I suppose I should clarify. There is no vote at the moment because there's no amendment. So, um, but in terms of the other comments, it's maybe for another subject. That's my... my <laughs> Uh, maleness is probably the least interesting thing about me, so um, so I, I don't know if that's really relevant in today's society. But however, um, I presume you're, you know, I, I don't know. It's very um, relevant in today's society, oh, given oh. that there's there's not a gender balance now. So, you know, we've all got our opinions here, or it just seems to be that I'm the only one with an opinion. But um, uh, if there's no amendment, I think we just need to go with the motion. So. Um, Unless there's an alternative proposal, leader, can the that's Councillor Blake here? I think it's, I've quite clearly asked to speak, and I see Andrew Wood and Chrissy Hill have asked to speak. Uh, I would be next, but I would like to defer to Councillor Wood and Councillor Hill. Yeah, apologies, I didn't see that in the chat there. So, um, Councillor Wood first, then. Uh, thank you, uh, Leader. I uh, very much appreciate this. Now, uh, I'd just like to start off with saying, at the last school council meeting, I asked whether if Councillor Dorward had authority from her party to participate within the coalition and didn't get a clear answer other than a lecture from Councillor Dorward on how well the administration was performing. Now I find, after writing to Anna Sauer, MSP, she does have the authority, even though he stated within the press that Labour would in no way work with the SNP. So how have we got to this position today? As I understand it, that all Labour senior positions will be retained, attracting the additional remunerations and the control of that particular committee. I would very much hope that Labour Group will see the errors off their way and with withdraw from all senior posts so that the public can at least see some element of separation, because at present all we are seeing is the shuffle of deck chairs on the Titanic. So can I please get some kind of understanding of what is going on today, because I also read in the Courier, and it's a statement from Councillor Dorward, that there's serious split within the coalition. So why are they still retaining these positions? Surely, if there are political differences, you have to look at how you overcome those political differences, 
differences. And clearly, with the statement in the press that, as I say, not I myself that made it, it this is coming from the group leader, Linda Dorward, that it's irreparable damage. Now, I'm sorry, there's, there's a serious contradiction going on here. And you've already been asked, why the urgency? Now, if this is to try and hide the fact that Labour's working with the SNP, in fact, I have to give you your credit here. This is unbelievable. I'm going to give you credit here as leader, Stephen, of the SNP group. I haven't seen any other leader within the council of the SNP group doing what you've done. You have managed to take Labour under your control. And I congratulate you on that, because at least now the electorate will know that by voting Labour, they're actually voting SNP. Very disappointed. But if uh, Councillor Dorr would please clarify those points I've raised, that would be really helpful. Thanks for that contribution, Councillor Wood. So, Councillor Dorward, I think um, you want to respond to that one? Thank you, Councillor Wood. And again, I would, um, you know, um, say or advise you don't need everything you read, you don't believe everything you read in the media. Whilst the Labour group have moved away politically from the administration, we are, as I've already stated, political and democratic pragmatists. I cannot stress robustly enough that putting the needs of the people and the region first necessitates having the right people in place for specific roles and also, Councillor Wood, having the strength of character to recognise this. We recognise the role of Civic Head is important and pivotal in taking brand Dumfries and Galloway forward. And we remain ambitious to do this in the best way that we can. And that is what we are doing at the moment. Anyone who knows Councillor Dryborough, and as a matter of fact, who doesn't know Councillor Dryborough, recognises that the skill set he has finally honed as veterans champion lends itself admirably to the role of civic head. Anyone who knows me, my background and my skill set, honed by years as a senior leader in the public sector, can see that the role of chair of communities is a challenge I will relish and one that I look forward to leading on on behalf of the council. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Dorward. Uh, Councillor... Hill. Hi, yes, thank you for that. Um, just on what Linda said there, um, the people of Dumfries and Galloway have voted 17 strong Conservatives in and their voice should matter. And for me, the true meaning of collaboration is a joint effort of multi-individuals or work groups to accomplish a task or a project within an organisation. I understand that the SNP, Labour and independent parties are all singing from the same song sheet, or indeed have been. But to say that Dumfries and Galloway have a rainbow collation and all parties are working together equally is not correct, as the rainbow is missing blue as none of the Conservative Party have been mentioned in the press release yesterday regarding the changes in the leadership or decision-making, or indeed in your speech um, that you said first, Stephen. This speaks volumes to our constituents, and that by majority have voted Conservative councillors, then it, you know it's more of a majority than any other party. Yet the administration still refuses to listen to the voices of the people in Dumfries and Galloway and have their own agenda, whether it be for the extra pay or the power, I'm unsure. Inclusivity. This is another word that the administration are keen to keep using in the public domain. The meaning of this word is clear. It's a noun. It is the practice or policy of providing equal access and opportunity and resources for people who might not otherwise be, who might otherwise be excluded or marginalised. I don't see this happening, and I have real concerns with this. And being a new councillor, I'm disappointed. Thank you. That's all I've got to say. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Hill. Uh, councillor, going back to Councillor Blake, please, and then Councillor Driver. Being inclusive, I uh, don't mind standing back for Councillor Driver if he wishes to go first. No, it's fine. You've been waiting, so uh, on you go, Councillor Blake.
Thank you, Leader. Uh, first of all, I th I'm rather dis I'm disappointed, uh, but not at all surprised that the administration's claim to being an inclusive council has been nothing more than a sham. We as a Conservative group will now reconsider our position in that respect uh, in future. I would now like to push forward an amendment to your motion. In challenging times, this Council recognises the need for clear political leadership and to respect the democratic mandate delivered by the electorate in Dumfries and Galloway at the local elections in May 2022 and the subsequent by-election in Galloway and Wigton West in December 2022. We therefore move to appoint the role of Leader of the Council to Councillor Gail McGregor, to appoint the role of Convener of the Council and agree to the designation to be attached to this to be Civic Head to Councillor Malcolm Johnson, that all appropriate administrative changes be made to standing orders, the schemes of administration and delegation, the member and officer protocol, including the media protocol, etc., to reflect this change from the previously agreed co-leader model. I formally move this amendment. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, can we see that in right? Right in Council of Blake, just so we can share with members, and that we're happily uh, able to share, circulate that using the team here, if that's okay. Yeah, I, it's probably easier for Councillor McGregor to do that if you can. I think that's it, just up there. Thank you. Yeah, so we can now see that in the in the Teams chat, which I think I always say at the start, we're not meant to use the Teams chat for um, things that we're going to contribute to the debate, but um, do we have a seconder for that? Yes. Councillor Hislop? Chair, I've sat here today and I thought at the start it was just a case of people were wanting to different jobs. I have serious concerns now about the stability of this administration going forward. We've heard that from Councillor Dorward, people take different lines. She wants to move away from the political side. We are going into a budget process where actually this needs to have everybody on board to make sure that it goes well because it's halved. And now we're hearing that this administration has major splits in it. With one group who are in the administration who want to take no responsibility of the policies of this council. And I think that we need to have a change in leadership, and I will be happy to second Councillor Blake. Okay. So you second in the amendment. Thank you. Uh, now, there's still, uh, I think, Councillor Driver to speak. Yeah, thank, thanks very much, Chair. I mean, we've been here before several years ago um, when the, the Tory were, uh, Tory group were in administration. And then six months down the line, they split amongst ourselves, never mind splitting any other groups. I think we've made it quite clear from the start that we try to be inclusive as possible. It depends on what your opinion is of inclusiveness, of course, um, and it must be taxing to the Tory group. Now, there's, there's a thing that you'll hear regularly this week, taxing in Tories, um, to go forward. I think I, I want to thank Linda Dorward for her tireless work as council co-leader at the moment. She's laid the foundations for a new council draft plan. That's already in place. We've already received, you know, um, more funding for, for the roads over the last number of months, and, and we're looking to go forward with the, the budget plan. As, as Ivor says, you're right. We've got a budget moving forward. We need to, we need to move forward forward with this. Um, and we will look at the strategic overview of the Council's priorities moving forward. So I, I don't know where the, the Tories are coming, where they don't think it's inclusive. They're only, they're only not included because they don't turn up to things at the end of the day. So therefore, I'm, I'm happy to go with the motion, Chair. Thanks, Councillor Jaibra. Um So we have, I think, I think I'll bring in Councillor Wood. I think you wanted to come back, if, if I'm correct. Thank you.
Yes, uh, thank you very much for bringing me back in. Uh, just one point I, I was also want to seek clarification on, and that is within the first line of your the administration's motion, it talks about how following discussions within the administration and constituent groups. Who are the constituent groups? I'm not quite sure what you're referring to specifically, Councillor Wood. Uh, what's the question? Sorry, the constituent groups, presumably you mean the Labour group, independent group and SNP group? No, because it, it says following discussions within the administration and, and constituent groups. Does this mean that our administration is going back to their political constituent, uh, uh, constituent areas and discussing it with their own political members. So we're actually broadening this out to the political groupings, constituency groupings. Is that what we're talking about here? Surely it would have just read following discussions within the administration is how I would have seen it. Yeah, so, I mean, I don't know how else to explain it, but the three constituent groups within the administration are the three political groupings, independent group, Labour group and SNP group. I certainly hope that's the case, because I wouldn't like to think that you're taking it back to your political constituencies, uh, organisations, and discussing council business in that way because that, that would be manipulating the council by outside personnel. That's not democratic, is it? I'm not sure if that's uh, the correct way to go forward with business. OK, well, th thanks for that input, Councillor Wood. But I think we've got an emotion and amendment. I think I have one last speaker, which is Councillor uh, Hagman. Thank you, convener. Um, yes, good afternoon, all. I, just a quick governance question, if I may. Clearly, we have one competent motion on the table before us. An amendment has been tabled and seconded by Councillor Ian Blake and Councillor Ivor Hislop. However, my question would be, is that actually a competent amendment? And the reason why I ask is there's no mention of outside bodies. And my understanding is some of the outside body positions are actually allocated to the role of leader, etc. So therefore, if that's not been included, which clearly it's not been included in the amendment, is the amendment even competent and is it even worth going to a vote if the amendment no. is not competent? Thank you. Yeah, the, the amendment's competent. Um, there's no requirement today to go through all the list of all the appointments of all the various things. We've already established who the chairs and vice chairs are in previous meetings, so it's, it's competent. It's just uh, it is as it's spoken, I presume, um, and that's been moved and seconded, so happy to accept it as an amendment. Um, OK, Councillor McGregor, I'll give you the last word and then we'll go to the vote. Thank you very much, uh, Leader. Um, yeah, it's a pity we've got to this stage, but we are where we are. Um, and I'm glad that you've accepted our amendment as competent. I suspect that I know where this vote is going and, and where the majority of those who don't sit in the largest party are going to vote. Um, and, and it will be with regret if, if we lose this vote, which I suspect that we will that I will formally write to you later today to withdraw from Leaders Panel, Budget Bureau and, sorry, Business Bureau and Budget Panel. Um, I entered into that in the spirit of absolute inclusiveness and collaboration. I think I've worked very well with all of you, but I'm afraid that if you continue to, to leave the largest group on the council out in the wilderness, um, we are not going to bring our good ideas to the table when you are all bereft of none. And I will formally write to you this afternoon to that effect. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Councillor McGregor, and I appreciate your candour. Um, okay, let's go to let's go to the vote. Can we just clarify that we're clear on what the motion and amendment are? Yeah, thank you, Convener. Um, we'll put up the the usual uh, spreadsheet. I will remove the what we're currently sharing just now, first and foremost. Um, in terms of the motion, is as uh, published with a slight amendment that's been circulated to all members and also um, added to um, in terms of showing on the screen. And in terms of 
uh, the amendment uh, which uh, has been proposed by Councillor Blake and seconded by Councillor Hislop. Um, that again has been uh, added to the chat but also shown on the screen uh, for everybody to see uh, and has been read out. Um, is everyone clear on the motion and the amendment? If so, we'll proceed to the vote. Um, first and foremost, um, okay, can everyone see the... Yeah. I'm struggling to see it myself. Uh, okay, convener. Motion. Deputy convener. Motion. Councillor Bell. If Councillor Bell's got problems with his microphone, if you could maybe put it on the chat, then we can see it and I can read it out. I'll come back to Councillor Bell. Councillor Beretti. Motion. Councillor Blake. Amendment. Councillor Brodie. Motion. Councillor Doogie Campbell. Motion. Councillor John Campbell. Motion. Councillor Ian Carruthers. Amendment. Councillor Karen Carruthers. Amendment. Councillor Dasper. Motion. Could you say that again? Motion. Councillor Davis. Amendment. Councillor Dempster. Motion. Councillor Denerly. Amendment, please. Councillor Driver. Motion. Councillor Drysdale. Amendment. Councillor Ferguson. Motion. Scroll right down. Councillor yeah. Hagman. Okay, it's okay. It's okay. Sorry. Motion, please. Yeah. Motion. Councillor Howe. Amendment. Okay. And I see that uh, Councillor Bell's uh, replied on the chat. Uh, for the amendment. Can we make that? That's been added. Okay. Uh, Councillor Howie. Motion. Councillor Hislop. Amendment. Councillor Ingalls. Amendment. Councillor Jameson. Motion. Councillor Johnston. Malcolm Johnson, apologies. Amendment. Councillor Maureen Johnson. Amendment. Councillor Jordan. Motion. Councillor Little. Motion. Councillor Lowe. Motion. Councillor McGregor. Amendment. Councillor McCammon. Amendment. Councillor McFarlane. Motion. Councillor Mayo. Motion. Councillor Marsh. Amendment. Councillor Marshall. Motion. Councillor Scobie. Councillor Slater. Motion. Councillor Stevenson. Councillor Stitt. Motion. Councillor Walters. Motion. Councillor Wilson. Motion. Can I just get you to say that again? Motion. Motion. Councillor Wood. Amendment. And Councillor Young. Motion. Okay, as members can see, uh, the motion is carried by 26 votes uh, to 16. 
Thank you very much, members, and Vlad, for your support there. Um, so that's agreed. So um, can I just take this opportunity to um, thank uh, Councillor Dorward for a very instructive seven months of uh, good cooperation and understanding in what's been a quite a challenging time, and I've really welcomed uh, being able to work with you. Um, so, uh, and good luck with the Communities Committee. Um, yeah, so, um, so that's uh, 2.1, but uh, as we're on to 2.2 uh, now, so because we've taken that decision at 2.1, can we now delegate to the Governance Insurance Authority to administratively amend standing orders, associated documents, to reflect the decision made immediately following this meeting as detailed as paragraph 3.4? Agreed. Thank you. And similarly, uh, 2.3, depend on the decision taken at 2.1, which we've decided, agree the media, media protocol as detailed and uh, attached in the appendix. Agreed. Sorry, Councillor uh, Drysdale. Thanks very much, Councillor Thompson. Um, I just would like to mention a couple of points with regards to 2.3 that we might be able to enter into discussion on today. But before I do that, I was speaking to some young people in a high school last week about democracy. It was interesting, I was telling them that demos means people and kratos means power. The meaning of democracy is a way of governing which depends on the will of the people, but we are where we are today. So, But um, Chair, what I wanted to ask was in 2.3, if I could just alert everyone to page seven, point number seven, media interviews, it says all requests for media interviews with elected members or in certain pre-arranged cases, Officers who are speaking on behalf of the council should be directed immediately to the communications unit. Now, whilst I accept this is not a change to policy because it is what we had before this new, newly designed administration was voted in today, I'm not happy with that. I think um, as a Conservative group, we understand that we have a right to go to the media if, we're, if, if interviews are requested of us or in fact photo calls as long as it's not to do with council-related issues. So therefore, could I request that in, in uh, point seven media interviews, we add the word in, so it's an amendment, to read all requests for council-related media interviews with elected members and so on and so forth, which still gives us the right um, as the opposition party to make our own statements, as long as it's not an actual council-related issue. So it would be issues and um, activities that we have been administering in our own wards. Thank you. Thanks, Chair. No, thanks, Councillor Drysdale. And I think, um, I mean, you're entirely within your right as a, as, as a ward councillor to speak to the media. I think this is really only, it's trying to specify that on behalf of the council, so that usually relates to council decisions. Uh, but I don't, Vlad, I don't know if you can assist with that, just for clarity. Thank you. Yeah, I, I think um, when we're reading it uh, afresh. I think I can see the point in terms of uh, it doesn't read well. Uh, however, the intention there, and uh, if it's okay with members, what I would suggest is that we just clarify that is purely when speaking on behalf of the council, uh, obviously uh, you're entitled to speak to the media in terms of your own uh, elected member role. Uh, so we can take that way in terms of just clarifying that. Can I come back in, Chair? Just to say, so that's great, Vlad, thanks for that. You'll just add if everyone's agreeable to that, that word can be added in. And the same probably with photo calls as well. If it's a non-related council photo call on page nine, it says the communications unit must be informed of all photo calls. The issue with media now is it's not just press. You know, we are doing a lot of our own management of media and, and actually helping the council in a number of issues, and quite rightly so, because that helps our constituents know when there's floods or they can't get medications to places during the, the recent storms and damage that we've all been experiencing. So I wouldn't say we have to inform the, the columns unit of all photo calls unless it's a council-related issue. So if it's okay just to reword that one as well, I'd be most grateful. Thanks, Chair. No, and it's a point well made, and I appreciate it. Maybe we didn't... I think the intention was clear, but it's maybe not captured, but I think that's helpful, uh, and it'll clarify that. And I think nod, uh, members are nodding their heads in agreement. So if we're happy with that, can we agree that? Thank you. I was going to say I've got no other business, but Councillor Drybra. Yes, yeah, th th thanks, Convener. Just um, perhaps is 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 um, my first sort of talk as civic head of the council. Um, my role 
will be to big up Dumfries and Galloway, and I hope that other members in this room will do exactly the same. I know that there are excellent members in this room because when I go to other organisations, national organisations, I see the standard of elected member in some of those other organisations, and I know that we've got right across this chamber, regardless what party or colour you actually are, we've got some excellent um, members in here. Our communities are doing some great stuff. The individuals within the communities are doing brilliant stuff, and we should commend them for actually doing it. We've seen what they've been like over COVID, and we see what they're like trying to help their fellow person during the cost of living crisis. And I, I will do so, as I have done as the Armed Forces champion for the whole of Dumfries and Galloway, to big them up in whatever sphere I am actually in. Our people uh, are, are very well thought of across the UK, obviously because the tourism industry has actually said that Dumfries and Galloway is the first place of choice for people to come to in Scotland. And I will um, support them and their projects to the best of my ability moving forward. I hope I, I do make you proud as a civic head, uh, and, and, and I hope that, you know, um, during the, the time that I am civic head, that we'll get more business, more tourists, more influence in Dumfries and Galloway. And I would suggest that other members, that if you get the opportunity to go on to national bodies, that you big up Dumfries as much as possible. Um, I, I remember Councillor Lynn Short from Dundee Council said that she says that Dundee is 26 square miles of perfection. Well, we all know that Dundee is 26 square miles of perfection, but we've got 2,100 square miles in Dumfries and Galloway of some really good stuff going on. And I hope as Civic Head, I'll get the opportunity to meet as many of those people as possible in the role that I'm now taking on. Thanks very much, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Driver, and uh, I'm sure you'll be exceptionally uh, well capable. I was going to say well endowed to take on the role, but that's, not, that's, maybe, that's maybe not the right way to put it. Um, no, but thank you for that. Um, I think that concludes the business for today. Uh, I, there might be a, is that a legacy hand? Or Councillor Blake, did you want to come in finally? I did uh, have, I put it in, I wanted to speak as well. It's just in, in view of uh, Councillor Driver's comments, uh, I think I would just like to give him a word of advice that uh, as civic head of the council, that he should be maybe be guarded about some throwaway remarks. In reply to my amendment, he mentioned if the Tories turn up, uh, I've just checked the council attendance records, uh, and coincidentally, after I appreciate the councillor driver has other duties. He, he's got an 81 per cent attendance rate. I myself have a 100 per cent attendance record. So it's throwaway remarks. I think if, being, if we are going to be an inclusive council, although that's obviously not the case, uh, he should maybe guard against that. Thank you. Thanks for that uh, contribution, of Councillor Blake. And f finally, um, I think Councillor Slater, I think, wanted to come in. Yes, it was regarding the, the contact in the media and that. That was a question I was going to ask today as well, but thank, I have to thank the Council for going back and looking at the wording of that document. Thank you very much. Well, OK, thank you. I think that concludes the business for today. So thanks very much for your attendance at this special meeting uh, and have a good rest of the day and weekend. Thank you.